<laughs> now we know, we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know Him that is true. Jesus and we are says. in Him that is true. Even in His Son, Jesus Christ, this is the true God and eternal life. You need to know Him. If you don't know Him, you don't know peace. If you don't know Him, you don't know eternal life. If you don't know Him, you don't know God. If you don't know Him, you're going to know hell, my friend. You'll know wrath. You'll know weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. But how do you get out of the condemnation? By knowing Jesus Christ. Say, how do I know Jesus? How do I know the Son of God? The only way, my friend, right. Isaiah 59, 1 and 2. The Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save. Awesome. Neither is ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquity, your iniquity, your iniquity has separated between you and your God. And your sins, your sins, your sins have hid his face from you that he will huh? not hear. Oh, yeah. Amen. Why won't God hear my prayer? I pray to God all the time. Why won't God hear my prayer? I pray and I pray and I pray. Why won't God hear my prayer? Because you need to take it to Jesus. You got sin that separates you from God. You need to take it to Jesus. You got sin that stops the ears of God because your sin is in the way. You got to take care of those sins. If you don't take Take care of those sins. You cannot be reconciled to God and He will not hear you. Pride is what gets in the way. Pride is the first sin ever committed. Pride is what stops people from trusting Jesus. Pride is what gets in the way. Because men love darkness rather than light. Everybody's got an excuse. And all it leads to is the darkness that they love. Why do you use that as an excuse? Why do people keep giving justifications that are not justifications? They're in darkness, friend. And they don't want to admit it because they'll feel bad if they say, well, I don't want to trust Jesus right now because I got a lot of sins I still want to commit. Friend, repent towards God today. Yeah. Put your faith in Jesus Christ today. Don't wait another minute. Time is running out. If you got in an accident today, if you died behind the wheel today, got a heart attack, you would die in your sin. And God would be just in sending you to hell. God is just. God is holy. God is righteous. God is good. How could you say no to a just God? But people say no every day neglecting the salvation of God every day. Oh, what a time it will be for those that have rejected Jesus Christ, having the knowledge of the one true God, having the knowledge of the gospel, having the knowledge that Christ died for your sins, was buried and rose again the third day, and saying, no, 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 I don't want that. Oh, what a condemnation it will be for those that know that truth. Jesus says it. I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. Right. And no man cometh unto the Father Father's but by life. me. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Only one name going to save your soul the name of Jesus Christ. Only one name going to reconcile you to God. The name of Jesus Christ. Only one name going to save you from the wrath of God. The name is Jesus Christ. How could anybody say no to Jesus? How could you say no and call yourself a rational person? How could you say no and say you're not insane? You're insane, my friend, to say I'd rather have hellfire than eternal life with Jesus who loves me. 
is pure insanity. And you say you're rational. You want me to believe you're rational. Really? Really? <laughs> Guys, you're not fooling anybody. You're not even fooling God. What you are is you're self-deceived. You need a savior. Jesus Christ died for your sins. He was buried and rose again the third day. How could you say no to Jesus? How could you say, wait, I'll wait on that. I won't do it now. I won't trust Jesus now. You need to do it now. Now was the day of salvation. Now was the accepted time. Stop rejecting what you know to be true. You, you tell the preacher, I don't... I don't believe in air. I don't believe in air. I don't. I think air is just a made-up concept, made by religion. It's made by organized religion. They all formulated this concept called air, and people breathe it, right? You're not going to make me believe there's air, preacher. But all the while, you're breathing. You're right, Kyle. But all the while, you're breathing it. But you're breathing air. No, preacher, you gotta prove it. Prove it to me. Prove it. <laughs> well, how about this? You ready? Let, let, let's get some empirical evidence you're breathing air. You ready? Here we go. You ready? Let's do it. You ready? Here we go. Seatbelt. See, for me, I'm like, I don't care about any of that. We proved it. <laughs> we breathe in air. That's just as easy it is to prove God. You don't need proof. You got a creation proving there's a creator. Creation. You can look in a mirror and say I'm human being. I got the breath of air, the breath of life in my lungs. Wow, that's proof there's a God. And so the evolutionist says no. No, that's not proof. We're all monkeys. We're all monkeys. And because we're all monkeys, preacher, I want to be a monkey on your back. Because it's all about evolution, preacher. It's all about science, preacher. It's all about logic and philosophy and reason preacher it's not about that it's about Jesus he died for your sins he was buried and rose again the third day and you know that to be true you know it and when you deny that the Bible calls that self-deception you're self-deceived I don't need to convince you there's a God you already know there's a God I would be a fool trying to prove that air exists I would be a fool to do that just as it's a foolish thing for me to prove that God exists. You know God exists. You know judgment's coming. You know that there's a Savior who died for your sins once you hear it. Somebody asked who needs logic. What's that? Somebody asked who needs logic. Well, did you have to use logic to say who needs logic? You're in your own folly, my friend. Friend. Well, the person that said who needs logic needs logic to say who needs logic. <laughs> That's the easy one. I just answered your question, by the way. You need Jesus. That's who you need. You need to use the logic that God's given you and take that logic and put it towards trusting Jesus Christ. You say philosophy. Well, philosophy is all over the place. We all have philosophies. The Bible even has a philosophy in it. But we take the philosophy that we know to be true. The Holy Bible, the Word of God is the true philosophy. And in that philosophy, Jesus Christ is the standard of truth that we all appeal to as human beings. And we appeal to the one true God. And this one true God says, it'll be foolish thing for you to reject Jesus Christ. That is logic. That is reasoning. That is rationality. That is true philosophy. When you reject that, my friend, you are what we call in the Bible a fool. It's not name calling. You're literally a fool, according to God. Psalm chapter 14, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. That would be a foolish thing to say that when all the while you know God exists. 
Look at that coat right there. <laughs> hey man, hey man, look at it. It doesn't glorify me. It glorifies Jesus Christ. He can save sinners from sin. He is able. I'm unable to save anybody. You need a savior. You need to stop thinking you can save yourself. You need to stop thinking that somehow you're going to make it to heaven by out, you know, your good outweighing your bad. You need to, you need to stop with the self deception today. Let, let it be it. Just say, this is it. I'm tired of this vanity. I'm tired of this life because this life, this world has nothing to offer me. The devil, the flesh, the world is nothing to me. What I'm going to look to is Jesus Christ. He's the one that offers hope. He's the one that offers peace. He's the one that offers joy. He's the one that offers understanding and gives you purpose for living. Why would you not trust in Jesus Christ? Why would you not believe in Him and become the new creature He intended you to be? But people don't want that. They want to be in their sins. People love their sins. Sin is a powerful thing, my friend. The Bible talks about the sin that so easily besets us dealing with saved people. You know, sin is still a struggle with saved people. Saved people still struggle with sin every day. Let me tell you, friend, if you're going to let sin get in the way of salvation, now you got a problem. Now you got an issue. Now you got something that's more serious than you catching a disease. They've got something more serious than you getting cancer. You got something more serious than you being a homeless person with no money, with no food. You, it'll be more serious than you not eating a meal for a whole week. It'll be more serious because what we're dealing with is eternal, not temporal. Eternity is what matters. What have you done with Jesus Christ? It doesn't matter what good, kind of a good person you are. You're going to be a good person ending up in hell. You better get Jesus Christ. Good people go to hell. Saved people go to heaven. Are you saved? Okay, let me get that. Go ahead, Scotty. Your turn, my friend. Spend eternity. Have you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ? Oh, yeah. Not, you Just ignore them. Trust in? Your good works, water baptism, being a good person, going to church. Did you know that none of those things can save your soul? Only Jesus Christ saves sinners. And we're all sinners. We Amen. It's good. Lord. Good preaching. Oh, we like sheep have gone astray. The Bible says there is none righteous. No, not one. There's none that doeth good. No, not one. You say you're a good person? Ask the right question, my friend. Where is heaven exactly? And you know where it is? Heaven is only through Jesus Christ. That would be the correct question to ask, my friend. We all deserve damnation. We all deserve judgment. But praise the Lord that He sent His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, down to this earth over 2,000 years ago to lay down His life for you and for me. Better get Jesus Christ. You're going to end up in hell knowing where hell is. How about that? That's not going to save your soul knowing where hell is. I Better get Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Friend, Jesus Christ wants to save your soul. For the devil and his angels. He doesn't want to send you to hellfire. He didn't make hellfire for us. He made it for the devil and his angels. All those who rebelled against God and went with Satan. When he tried to send up to be like God, take over his throne, he was cast out. You too will be cast out if you refuse Jesus. He created hell for the devil and his angels. And those that reject Jesus Christ will end up there, even though he didn't create it for them. You'll end up there, my friend. You said you call yourself a fool, and you are a fool every time you reject Jesus Christ. Even to this day, 
but he cannot save your soul unless you repent and trust in him as your savior. He doesn't want you to go to hellfire. He wants you to be reconciled with him. He wants to have a relationship with you. That's why he created us. Amen. He didn't create us to send us to hellfire. He wants all, all to believe on him. Whosoever a uh, fool the you're a fool because you don't yeah, understand that verse don't quote the bible leave the bible to people to actually read it just stay away from it because you don't understand it a fool couldn't understand the bible okay leave it to us what you need to do right now is worry about trusting jesus christ and taking care of those sins that are going to send you to hell and that would be a foolish thing if you don't do that and you would be a fool the fool said his heart there is no god you need to get your sin debt taken care of first before you start worrying to get yourself cleaned up. You can't worry about anything else, trying to clean up your life. Because you cannot do that. You have to repent and trust Jesus. You don't know the context. If I told it to you, you still wouldn't understand it. Just stay away from it altogether. The natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. You're a natural man. You won't receive anything in the Bible. You couldn't understand the context if you tried a whole lifetime. Until you trust in Jesus Christ, you won't understand a thing, so I won't even try to explain it to you. Jesus saves. The Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. God didn't make gay. Men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. Men are choosing to do that, those things. So, no, God didn't make anybody that way. Somebody lied to you. You got to stop believing society and start believing the Bible. I will say it's for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Sin equals death. Life comes through Jesus Christ. I ask myself the question all the time. Why did God make foolish people on my scope that ask stupid questions? And I, you know, I can't answer that, you know? They're just people on my scope that ask stupid questions. And I got to give stupid answers because they're stupid. So I ask that question too, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus loves you, friend. That's why he went to the cross for you. But unless you trust what he did on the cross, you cannot have eternal life. Unless you trust what he did on the cross, you cannot have your sins forgiven. You cannot pay your own sin debt. If you try to pay it yourself, you're going to pay it for all eternity in a lake of fire. Because God's casting you out. There, there is no man in the sky. He's in heaven. Jesus try to learn a little bit of Bible before you start attacking people that actually believe the Bible. Christ died for our sins, so we might be saved. Yeah, amen. You're because you're a child of the devil. John 8 44. You have your father the devil. The lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaks of the lie, he speaketh of his own, because he's a liar and the father of it. So yeah, you're stupid. When you ask a stupid question um you're not sincere my friend you're out here to heckle me so when you can start rationalizing maybe somebody won't call you stupid okay but but the gift of god is eternal life through jesus christ our lord what do you believe in? Oh. Hey amen jesus saves that's right i am not ashamed of the gospel of christ because the gospel is the power of God and Amen. salvation. Guys, read those signs. That's 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 true wisdom right there, my friend. Right. Hey Amen there, Huff. Appreciate the encouragement. Praise the Lord. There's all sorts of quotes. Nobody knows what color it is, color Jesus is. Why would you even focus on the color of Jesus? It just shows your ignorance. The world focuses on color of skin. We focus on Jesus being righteous. He created all men, one blood of all nations. So we're not worried about what color Jesus is. We're worried about he's the God of the universe. Yeah. Hey, did you know if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, the truth is not in us. 
Jesus will ultimately be the government in the end. So why are you worried about Trump? Worry about Jesus ruling and reigning in the millennial reign. That's what you need to worry about. Amen. Short of the glory of God, but we are all as unclean things, and all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. And we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. Isaiah 64, 6. Do you know that? What's going on over here? This guy's all fired up, amen. Yeah, well, playing with the baby over here. <laughs> that amen. Little man out here. Praise the Lord. Got the Bible out and, and everything, amen. Praise God. Amen. Well, when you, when you got on the scope, it's KJV Bible Scope, amen. That's the scope. God didn't make anybody fat. God didn't make anybody stupid, even though there's people stupid on my scope. <laughs> Amen there, Jeffrey. Amen. Praise the Lord. Appreciate your encouragement. Amen. It says, repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Amen. That's Bible, amen. Amen. God is good, amen. It's saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Amen. Well, now we're asking the right questions there, fool. Appreciate that. You want to know how you get to heaven? I'd be glad to help you out with that. That's, that's a blessing for you to even ask that. Jesus Christ died on a cross for our sins over 2,000. Well, we can rationalize now. Well, 2,000 years ago, he was born of the Virgin Mary, Isaiah 7, 14. He lived a holy, perfect, sinless life. 1 Peter 2, 22. 2 Corinthians 5, 21. 1 John 3, 5. And he... He lived that perfect life as a human being, God manifest in the flesh, 1 Timothy 3, 16. And he lived that perfect life for you and for me, and then he gave his life freely upon a cross to die for our sins. Now, the sins that he died for are the sins that we committed past, present, and future. So every sin you've ever committed, Jesus Christ has died for those sins. Who's, who's that nudge? Um, are you, you better not be talking about my little girl. Um, you talking about my little girl, I'll block you. Nobody attacks my little girl on my scope. I will block you. We, we are from a Bible believing church in Florida, but we are, we are now located in Virginia, North Carolina at the border back and forth. Cause we're going to the church in Virginia. So if you believe, now, now let me finish my gospel message here. If you believe that Christ died for your sins and he was buried and rose again a third day, you trust that and believe in that by faith, faith alone. The Bible says you have everlasting life. You, you've got forgiveness of sins and you have reconciliation to God. Okay. You have that the moment you trust and believe on Jesus Christ. Okay. Now that was for fool fool is the one that asked me the question okay i don't know his whole name i just saw the first part of his name it said fool okay so that that was for you fool so now you know that's that's how you get saved it's simple even a child can believe on jesus christ and be saved it's that simple so the the hard part is humbling yourself and trusting in what you know to be true okay that's going to be the hard part because people want to trust in being a good person. They want to trust in going to church. They want to trust in an emotion and a feeling. They want to trust in water baptism. They want to trust in all these things when all it is is simply trusting what Jesus did on the cross for your sins.
And it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter if you're a criminal. It doesn't matter if you murdered somebody. It doesn't matter if you're a pedophile. It doesn't matter if you're a homosexual. Jesus Christ is willing to forgive you. Why don't you humble yourself today and put your trust in him? Don't wait another minute. Time's running out. If you die today without Jesus Christ, you would end up eternity in a lake of fire. Um, well, it's better than that, fool. It's better than that. It's not just about going to heaven, fool, because one day Jesus is going to leave heaven and come to earth in the millennial reign. And no, and if you go to heaven and Jesus isn't there, you're going to be in outer darkness. So what you need is don't worry about going to heaven. Worry about being with the Lord, okay? That would be better. Amen there, Huff. Good saying. Belief is the only requirement. How's it going there, Peyton? Good to see you. and seen you in a while. Amen. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Amen. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Out of the mouth of babes. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know, you know, guys, you could be saved today. You could have assurance of eternal life. You could have all your sins forgiven. I don't understand why people say no to that, but the Bible makes it clear that there is a force out there. Men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. Satan has blinded the minds of them which believe not. There are so many aspects to why people reject Jesus Christ, and it's more than just not knowing the truth. Because people know that God exists, there is no proving that. There is no telling people that convincing people of the histor historicity of Jesus Christ. You don't need to prove that. People know that Jesus existed. Now we need to worry about what did Jesus say about himself? And he said that he was the savior. He said he was the way, the truth, and the life. They said he was born to die according to the scriptures. And friend, the only way to get reconciliation according to Jesus was to believe and trust in him. Friend, you better get Jesus Christ. There is no justification. There is no, there is no excuse that you could possibly give to say, well, I have an excuse to not trust in Jesus Christ. There is none. There is none. You better get Jesus Christ right now, my friend. Okay. Here's the one you was talking to a minute ago. I saw a new heaven and new earth for the first heaven and the first earth the best way and there's no more sea. And I saw John saw the holy city oh, New Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bridegroom and one for us. Amen. New Jerusalem, amen. Yeah, God is not gonna stay in heaven. He's gonna come down to earth. Thousand year millennial reign. Amen. Jesus saves. Care about your soul, friend. Care about where you're going to spend eternity. What about? What about it? What about it? You're waiting. You're still waiting. Why are you waiting? People on my scope waiting. What are you waiting for? You get on my scope. People don't believe in Jesus and they get on my scope. And all they do is they, they, they heckle, they listen. Some of them don't even heckle. They don't even, they're not even disrespectful. They just come on my scope and they listen. Why are, guys, you know why you're listening? Because you know it's true. I've been trying to tell you that all along. You know it's true. What you need to do is stop waiting. Stop waiting. Get yourself a King James Bible and read it. Start in Genesis, work yourself to Revelation, and read the Bible in truth, not in a skeptical heart, but in truth. Respond to what you know to be true. Trust that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried and rose again the third day. Because God, that's the promise of Psalm 12, 6 and 7. There is one book that God preserved on this planet. You know, planet Earth, not on Mars, not on Pluto, but on planet Earth, there is one preserved, inspired book. And you're only going to find that in the King James Bible, my friend, because truth is absolute. That's another reason why. If all the other Bibles are true, then you got contradictions all over the place. 
And God doesn't deal in contradictions. He deals in absolute truth because he's the absolute standard. He's the absolute authority. He's the absolute in everything. Whenever you appeal to absolutes, you're appealing to God because God is absolute. Okay? So we believe in the King James Bible is the absolute truth. It's the final authority for all matters of faith and practice. You better get the Bible. We need to stop telling the Bible what to do. And we need to let that good old King James Bible tell us what to do. Amen. Scholars ain't going to help you, friend. You better get God's Word. Do, do you believe in evolution or biology? Well, obviously, I believe those things exist. If that's what you're asking. Yeah, I believe they exist. I believe there's people out there that believe in evolution. Now, when you say evolution, do you mean microevolution or macroevolution? See, then you're going to have to get specific. Now, biology, what do you mean by biology? Is that going to be microbiology or macrobiology? Of course. Of course. Why would you not take it literal? Amen. Seven days. Absolutely. And if you don't believe God created the world in six days and rested on the seventh, you're a fool. That's the point. I'm not being mean. I'm not name calling. The Bible says that, okay? Okay, who tested that the world was 12,000 years old? Now, you're going to have to give me empirical evidence who tested that the world was 12,000 years old. Who saw the earth from 12,000 years ago and lived to test that? You're going to have to give me that evidence, my friend. And I want empirical evidence. No, no, troll. What you're saying is something subjective. That's subjective. You're saying that according to the circle of people that you've dealt with. All the scientists that I know believe in the one true God. Come on. Your science argument is foolish. I'm wrong. 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 Nobody knows that. Okay, show me how simple it is since it's only a couple of million years back. I'm curious. <laughs> I'm curious. Who lived to see 12,000 years ago, let alone 12 million years ago? No, I'm asking you the question. You, you guys asking me all these questions. I want you guys to answer my question. Come on, none of you have answered any of my questions. I've been answering your questions left and right. Now, you answer my question. Who lived 12 million years ago, to, 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 and fast forward that in time, to be able to tell you, I empirically saw this, that the earth is 12 million years old. Now, when you got that proof, then you can talk to me. No, you're on my scope screaming at me right now. So if you're going to try to, you're going to make a premise on my scope, then you're going to have to answer for that premise. Uh, right now you're running away. You got, you got your tail between your legs because now I got you in a corner and you can't answer it. And so what do you do? You put the burden of proof back on me again when you're the one that made the claim initially. I'm just telling people about Jesus out here. You're the ones challenging me. Okay, give me the empirical evidence of those, give me the empirical evidence of those that have tested 10 or 12 million years. Okay, I'm still waiting. Troll hasn't answered my question. He, he's got to run to red herrings. Is that what you guys do when you can't answer a question? You run to red herrings, and that's what you're doing. Carbon-14 dating? Are you serious? You run to carbon-14 dating? It's already been disproven by... Science. How do you run a carbon-14 dating 
when it's been disproven by science already. It's not accurate. Yeah. What, science? Okay, wait a minute. So you're not up to par on science. You're not up to par on science. So you still think carbon dating is accurate. Look at even even high karate knows that carbon dating is not accurate. They, they have new scientific methods of measuring now and they don't use carbon 14 dating anymore. And you're still using that argument? It just shows how outdated you are. You're still in the Bronze Age, my friend, if you still think carbon-14 dating is used as a measure of dating age. Man, you need to go back and do more studying, my friend. You're, you're on the wrong scope, because, no, we're up to date with our, with, with our studies on this stuff, okay? John, 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 give it up. You're, you're done, man. Go, go back, go back. Just get off the scope, get in an encyclopedia, Start reading again, okay? Now, anybody else can give me empirical evidence, empirical evidence that somebody visually seen 12 million or billions of years. Now, when you can do that, then you can say evolution isn't a blind faith and a blind belief. You got a blind faith, my friend. Blind. You're walking around following other blind men into a ditch, just like the Bible says. Carbon-14 dating is not accurate. Somebody lied to you. Love Jesus, you need to learn how to love Jesus because, uh, friend, doing study and research about science today in the 21st century, carbon-14 dating is not accurate. <laughs> Do some study. I don't know what else to tell you if you don't even know as much as that. Yeah, Kyle, looks like he's defending evolution. You know, a lot of Christians compromise. A lot of Christians compromise, and some Christians aren't even Christians. So we got to watch out, guys. Watch out. There are, there are wolves in sheep's clothing. Be careful. Why do you got love Jesus on your on your call sign then, uh, love, love Jesus? Why do you got... Okay, there we go. There we go, I blocked him. Yay! <laughs> Surreal's my uh, normal troll he gets on to try to destroy my scopes, yeah. We get rid of him, we got rid of all the problems, I think. I think it should be better, High Karate. What, what, uh, what um, Sorrel will do, because he was under Love Jesus. Yeah, I blocked him. Um, what Love, what uh, Sorrel will do, he was under the call sign Love Jesus. What he'll do is he'll open another account. Hey, Swisher, here's your final warning, Swisher. Do not use any corrupt communication on my scope, okay? If you use corrupt communication, I will block you, okay? I don't want to block you. Let's rationalize. Let's reason on the scope. I don't mind doing that, but there will be no name calling, okay? Hey, Des, how you doing? Understood there, Swisher. But you can come out of being a Gentile and trust in Jesus Christ. And uh, you're not a Jew when you trust Jesus Christ. You are in Christ. Amen. Please forgive them, for they know not what they do. It's finished, loud he cried. Oh, what love for me he died. In my stead he bled on Calvary. Once for all Christ rescued me. Free salvation now he offers. Take his gift, oh, hear his plea. On the bloody cross, behold him. Join his shout of victory. Amen.
It is finished, loud he cried. Oh, what love for me he died. In my stead he bled on Calvary. Once for all, Christ rescued me. Amen. Jesus saves. Right. <laughs> you could have a Savior today. I'm serious. Look. Look how serious I am. Look. Nothing but the blood. That's pretty serious. That's pretty serious. Amen. They're dead. <laughs> Whole again. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Joey, you mentioned my kid again. I'll block you. There will be no. You can reason with me about my faith, but you mention my child again. I'll block you. No other fault I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. <laughs> What's the other verse? Uh-oh. We don't know the other verse. Mm -mm. We should know that one. I feel guilty. This is all my righteousness. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my hope and peace. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other. Yeah, Des, that's my daughter, amen. I thought you knew. Of Jesus. All right, I got the blue phone. Give me some Romans 1. <laughs> Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, which he had promised to four vast prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, which is made of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection of the dead by whom we have received grace and apostleship from obedience to the faith among all nations for his name, among whom are you also the called of Jesus Christ, to all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. For God is my witness in whom I serve in my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you, always in my prayers, making requests that by any means, not at length, I might have a prosperous journey by the word of by the will of God to come unto you. For I want to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift to the end you may be established, that is, that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith, both of you and me. Now I would not have you in your brethren, that oftentimes I purposed to come unto you, but was that hitherto, that I might have some freedom among you also, even as among the other Gentiles. I am debtor, both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise, as much as in me as I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. <laughs> All right, that was really good. Amen. Give her a hand if you're at home. Amen. Give her a hand. That's good. She, she can usually get through the whole Romans 1. Amen. So praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You can all learn the Bible. And guys, come on. People learn songs and they memorize songs. Why not learn the Bible? That's what's going to matter in eternity. Learn the Bible, guys. Amen. Jesus, can, Jesus saves you. He gives you a new life. And why not learn what's going to matter in eternity, guys? I, I, I couldn't admonish you enough about that. Amen. Lord is good. Lord is gracious. Give me a family that's saved. Amen. I'm so thankful that my wife is saved. My little girl is saved.